Hi everyone! So, this is an Arduino Uno board, and this is another version of it, and this is an Arduino Nano, and lastly, this is the Arduino Pro Mini. These four boards are used in electronic projects, and they are based upon the Atmega328 microcontroller, developed by the company Atmel. But not only these boards can be used, but you can use another boards. And today I'm gonna talk about the STM32 based board, or the minimum system requirements for it. It's based upon the STM32 F103C microcontroller, developed by ST Microelectronics, and it's called the Pluple. So, the first impression of it, it's pretty small board and pretty cheap too. Um, it have a width of about one and a half centimeters and a length of five centimeters. And if you go into the microscopic view, you can see that actually my board is a clone, a Chinese clone, not the original one. So, in this video, I'll be comparing the clones to the Arduino boards and not the original ones because you have a high probability to get a clone rather than the original one so the board is having two LEDs and it's having some debug boards and is having two jumpers and a micro USB so you probably if you're gonna get one from Aliexpress you will get it something like that it will be inside a anti-static case to prevent it from damaging or anything and I will be opening a brand new one. I actually have it from a year or so, but I didn't open it, so yeah. When you open it, you will find that you get the board itself, you get the pen headers, and you get the two jumpers, which are important. So it's not necessarily that you will get the pen headers in the correct shape or size, but that's not a problem. So now it's time for soldering the pen headers. So it's not that hard, but it requires some um, patience. So you, of course, as I said, you will not get the correct size and shape, so you probably have to figure out on your own, or you could just um, make the steps I made. So I just get the biggest pen header I could possibly get and put it in the um, board itself, then I cut from the other pen headers the um, relevant size for it. But you can see that there is a small problem when cutting. So if you face something like that, if you're in the corner, just flip the pen header. But if you're in the middle, you will have to get a tool to smooth out the, the sides of it. So it can be a very easily plugged in. You have two routes to um, put the pen headers on the STM32. The first route, you can put the pen headers first on the board, then pressing it on the breadboard, or you can do the inverse. Put the pen headers on the breadboard, then put the board on the pen headers. So, I, in my case, I had to put the pen headers on the board itself in the beginning because my breadboard was very hard and very new, so it would be very hard to just press pen headers directly into the breadboard. Now, it's time for soldering. So one most important thing you should keep in mind while soldering is to keep your soldering iron as clean as possible and also as shiny as possible because even if you don't have the soldering talent keeping your soldering iron tip clean will result in an, a good performance and result in a very very good soldering job but if you have on the other hand your soldering iron dirty or anything it would just result in a very very bad soldering joint and you would probably destroy the pen headers. You actually have 40 pens to solder, 20 on the right and 20 on the left. But another thing to consider, which is also important, is do not solder all the pins together after each other in a row, because the board is having an active component, which is the IC itself. The STM32 MCU itself is on the board. If you get um, overheated it can get damaged or just get barbecued so you probably have to take breaks after for example 15 pins or 20 pins by maximum and you could actually uh, monitor the temperature of the IC by your hand or if you get some tools like a multimeter a digital multimeter which have a temperature measuring functionality you can just use it but if you don't have no problem you just could use your fingertip to just measure the temperature of the IC 
One other point to consider and keep it in mind is that you shouldn't solder the pen headers um, bringing the soldering iron over the components on the board. So you always solder from the outside, not just bringing the soldering iron over the components because you can easily desolder one of them and resoldering back them is just very hard because they are um, SMD devices, so they are not easily solderable. So just solder from the outside and do not just overlap the soldering iron with the board. You should probably get a result like that shown in the video at the moment. So I'm not the best one who solder, but you should probably get something like that. Now it is time to place the jumpers in their place. So before in the beginning of this video, I talked about that the jumpers have a very important um, role. So it actually chooses from where to boot. but. At the moment, all what we need is just to run the board. So place the both of the jumpers beside each other to the front direction uh, towards the micro USB port. You should probably get something like that. It can be hard, which is normal because it's pretty new. So you can use a tool for that. Just to run the board, all what you have to do is just get any generic a micro USB cable and plug it to the board. You should get it to light up some LEDs. But I'm not sure if it's important or necessarily that it will blink, but it should get the power LED on. Now let's talk about the specifications of this board and compare it to a normal Arduino board based at Mega328 microcontroller like the Arduino Uno or so. So it's pretty handy to print out some of these um, pinout diagrams, but I will not talk on the pinout because it's related a little bit to programming. So I just made a small um, sheets document on Google uh, that have the comparison between the Arduino and the Blue Pool. So in a normal Arduino, you are having 20 digital pins, the 14 normal ones plus 6 analog ones, which can be used as digital pins too. While in the blue pool, you are already having 27 digital pins, which can be used as inputs or outputs. All the 6 analog pins in a normal Arduino are 5 volt compatible while in the blue pill they are only 3.3 volt compatible. Of course all the 20 digital pins on a normal Arduino are 5 volt compatible while on the other side the blue pill have only 18 5 volt compatible pins and they are just 5 volt compatible in reading not writing. In a normal Arduino you are having 10 bits of resolution in its analog pins so you are having values between 0 to 1023 while in the blue pill you are having 12 bits of resolution in its analog pins so you are having values between 0 to 4095. And of course the normal Arduino is having 6 analog pins while the blue pill is actually having 10 analog pins. Also, the blue pill is having what's called a CAN bus, which of course the Arduino doesn't have. In a normal Arduino, you are having one kilobyte of EEPROM space, while in the blue pill, you are having just virtual EEPROM, not real one. In a normal Arduino, you are having 32 kilobytes of flash memory to save some program data or save some just raw data, while in the blue pill you might have 64 kilobytes or 128 kilobytes. So you can be lucky and get a clone with 128 kilobytes. In the Arduino you are having one I squared C port, while in the blue pill you are having two. And of course the logic level in a normal Arduino is 5 volts or 3.3 volts, but in a blue pill it's actually only 3.3 volts, except for the 18 pins which are 5 volt compatible. A normal Arduino is operated at 16 MHz, while the blue pill is operated at 72 MHz or more, depending on your clone. There is 6 PWM pins on the Arduino with 8 bits of resolution, while in the blue pill you are having 16 PWM pins with 16 bit of resolution, which is a lot better. The blue pill is having a built-in RTC, which is a little bit tricky to program based upon my experience. The blue pill is having three serial ports, so you can hook up some GPS modules or anything, while the Arduino is having only one serial port. The blue pill is having two SPI ports, while the normal Arduino is having one SPI port.
The Blue Pill is having 20 kilobytes of RAM while the Arduino is having only 2. And lastly, the Blue Pill is having a USB port which can be programmed easily even if you're having a clone and not an original one. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can open my blog post on the internet to see more details. And of course, all the links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.